Welcome back to the Deep Dive. You know we love to explore the cutting edge of renewable energy, and today we're diving into a topic that's blowing up literally uh, urban wind turbines. Yeah, these are wind turbines designed to work right in the heart of our cities. Specifically, we've gotten a ton of requests from you all about the Dragonfly turbine. Oh yeah, the Dragonfly. That's right, so we'll unpack what makes it unique, how it actually works, and why everyone's buzzing about it. And while we're at it, we'll touch on a few other cool urban wind turbine designs that are popping up. Now, if this is your first time with us, you can find Le Podcast de Philip and subscribe on YouTube. All right, so jumping into it, the Dragonfly turbine is really turning heads because it just looks so different. Yeah. I mean, when I think wind turbine, I picture the yeah. giant white towers out in like fields and stuff. Right, exactly. But this one was developed by architect Renzo Piano and ENLL Green Power. And it's a... Uh, it's actually designed to look like a dragonfly. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But I'm guessing there's more to it than just aesthetics, right? You got it. It's not just a pretty face. The dragonfly's shape is all about function. They use this thing called biomimicry. Biomimicry. Yeah. It's basically taking inspiration from nature to solve problems in engineering. See dragonfly wings? They create these little swirling vortices of air. Tiny tornadoes. Kind of. And those vortices actually help the dragonfly with lift and stability. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah, so the dragonfly turbine, it copies that with its blades, which makes it super efficient even in light winds. That makes sense. So it's beautiful and functional, but how do you go from an insect to something that can power a city? Well, it's all about scale and adaptation. It's still pretty tall, 20 meters actually, but the mast is super thin, only 35 centimeters in diameter. Oh, wow. And the blades, they have a 16 meter span. So basically, it's designed to fit in those tighter urban spaces. That makes a lot of sense. But okay, you know, cities aren't exactly known for having strong, steady winds. Can this thing really generate enough power to make a difference? Oh, absolutely. One of the coolest things about the Dragonfly is that it can start generating power at wind speeds as low as 2 meters per second. So like a gentle breeze. Exactly. Like the wind you feel when leaves are rustling. That's key for cities where the wind can be kind of unpredictable. I see. So it can work with those subtle city winds. But let's be real, traditional turbines are loud. Wouldn't this be a nightmare in a city? Yeah, noise pollution is a huge concern in urban areas. But the Dragonfly actually tackles this head on. How so? Well, most wind turbines have three blades, right? The Dragonfly only has two. That actually cuts down the noise a lot, making it much better suited for a city environment. OK, so they've thought about the looks, the efficiency, the noise. What else makes this thing stand out? Well, I've actually built a prototype and tested it in Pisa, Italy. Oh, really? How did it do? It performed incredibly well. Yeah. In just two months, it generated over 12,241 kilowatt hours of electricity. Uh, you know, that's enough to power several homes for a whole month. Seriously. <laughs> that's impressive. So what's next for the Dragonfly? Are we going to start seeing them everywhere? Well, ENL Green Power is planning to mass produce them starting in Italy, but it's bigger than just the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly is kind of a sign of this wave of new urban wind turbine designs that are popping up. Oh, so it's just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. There are all these innovative designs out there, each with their own strengths and uses. For example, there's the wind tulip. Wait, a wind turbine shaped like a tulip? I got to hear more about this. Well, it's a really beautiful design specifically made for urban and residential areas. The vertical blades actually help it blend into the cityscape. So it generates energy and looks good doing it? Well, wow. What other crazy designs are out there? Well, there's this thing called the Arriva Turbine Wall. Turbine Wall? Yeah. Instead of like a standalone turbine picture, a wall with turbines built right in. A wall of turbines. How does that even work? It's pretty wild. They use this helical structure, kind of like a spiral staircase, to maximize the surface area and catch wind from different directions. That's awesome. And it cuts down on the noise too, right? Exactly. Which is huge for cities. I'm loving these innovative designs. They could really change how our cities look and work. There's even more. The eolic wall is a modular system. Mm -hmm. You can stack these units like building blocks to create wind power in smaller spaces. So many cool options. Yeah. I'm already blown away by how creative these designs are. It just goes to show how much ingenuity and passion is going into creating a more sustainable future. I feel like we've covered so much already. We've just scratched the surface. OK, so we've seen these amazing designs. But what I really want to know is how could this actually change our cities? Yeah, that's the exciting part. We're not just talking about a new power source. We're talking about a whole new look and feel for our urban landscapes. Okay, I'm all ears. <laughs>
What could our cities look like with all these turbines around? Imagine instead of those big clunky power plants, you have these graceful turbines all over, integrated into buildings, maybe in parks and green spaces, cities that look amazing and run on clean energy. That sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. But realistically, wouldn't that take like a total revamp of everything we have now? Well, it wouldn't happen overnight, of course. But a lot of cities are already adopting greener building practices and investing in renewable energy. These new wind turbines could really speed things up. So it's not just a tech thing. It's a cultural shift, too. Right. Exactly. It's about changing how we think about energy and cities, moving towards a model where energy production is decentralized and sustainable and just woven into the fabric of our city life. That's a really powerful idea. Hmm. But there are always challenges, right? What are some of the hurdles we need to overcome? Cost is definitely a big one. You know, these new technologies can be expensive up front compared to traditional energy sources. Right. And then there are logistical challenges, finding the right places to put these turbines, connecting them to the grid. I bet public perception is a hurdle, too. Not everyone's going to be excited about having wind turbines in their backyard. Absolutely. Some people might worry about the looks or the noise or even the impact on birds. Yeah, those are valid concerns. So, yeah, education and community involvement will be super important to get people on board. It seems like there's a lot to figure out, but the benefits are huge. What can cities do to make this transition smoother? Well, city planners can prioritize renewable energy in new development projects. They can offer incentives for businesses and homeowners to adopt these technologies. You know, make it more affordable for everyone. So it sounds like even individual citizens have a role to play in this. For sure. You can support policies that promote renewable energy, make smarter choices in your own life, maybe even look into generating your own power at home. That's pretty empowering to think that we can all be part of the solution. What do you think is the biggest misconception people have about urban wind turbines? I think a lot of people still picture those huge, noisy turbines you see out in the country. They don't realize these new designs are smaller, quieter, and way more aesthetically pleasing. They're designed to blend into the city, not stick out like a sore thumb. It's incredible how far this technology has come. Yeah. Are there any downsides or risks we need to consider? Well, there are always risks with anything new. Bird strikes are a concern, although studies have shown that urban turbines are actually less of a risk than tall buildings. That's good to know. And some people argue that any wind turbine, no matter how sleek it is, kind of messes with the look of a city. Yeah, the visual impact is something to consider, for sure. It's all about finding a balance, I think, between the benefits of renewable energy and what the community wants. This is definitely a complex issue. It's clear that we can't just ignore these new solutions just because they might be challenging. Definitely. We need to have open conversations, weigh the risks and benefits, and find creative ways to address those concerns. Well said. We've talked about the impact of urban wind turbines, the challenges, and the importance of getting everyone involved. But our deep dive isn't over yet. All right, so we've talked about where urban wind turbines are now and their potential. But what about the future? What's next for wind energy in our cities? No, the future is wide open. I think one of the most interesting things is how different technologies are starting to work together. Oh, like what? Well, think about things like the Internet of Things, AI smart grids. All of that could completely change how we integrate wind power into urban environments. Okay, so how could that work? Imagine you have a whole network of wind turbines across a city. Right. And they're all talking to each other, and the power grid... They could adjust how much energy they're producing based on demand, wind conditions, even weather forecasts. Wow. So it's like a super smart system. Exactly. It would make wind energy way more efficient and reliable. Sounds pretty futuristic. Yeah. How far off are we from something like that? Honestly, it's closer than you might think. Some cities are already testing out smart grids. And as sensors and data processing get cheaper, these systems will become more and more common. So we really could be on the edge of a huge change. That's right. It makes you think about all the other implications, too. How would this affect life in cities? Yeah, it really raises some fundamental questions about urban planning. If cities can make more of their own energy, it could lead to more decentralized communities. You know, maybe people move away from the suburbs back into more walkable urban centers. That's an interesting thought. And what about jobs and the economy? Oh, huge potential there developing, installing, maintaining all these new technologies, it's going to create a lot of jobs. And as demand for renewable energy keeps growing, that sector is only going to get bigger. So it's good for the planet and good for people. Mm -hmm. But we have to make sure everyone benefits from this transition, right? Absolutely. We can't leave anyone behind. Equity and inclusion have to be top priorities. That's a really important point.
And it kind of brings us back to our original question. We've seen what wind can do, but what other natural forces could we tap into for energy in cities? That's where things get really exciting, I think. We need to think outside the box and look to nature for inspiration. Maybe we can harness energy from foot traffic or the heat coming off buildings. There's so much potential out there. It's mind-blowing to think about all the possibilities. It feels a little overwhelming, but also really hopeful. We have the technology, the ideas, and the passion to create a truly sustainable future. I completely agree. It feels like we're at a turning point. And if we embrace innovation and work together, we can create a better world for everyone. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us for this deep dive into urban wind turbines. It's been a fascinating conversation. My pleasure. We hope you've learned something new and are feeling inspired to explore the possibilities of a more sustainable future. Remember, the future is something we create. So let's keep learning, innovating, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. That's it for this episode of The Deep Dive. We'll see you next time for another exciting exploration. Until then, stay curious.